headphones are because the gardeners are just about here. They make a bunch of noise and I can't handle it. This is a tool you're gonna to see me use later. Now I used to do this from hardwood and I still do at times when this is too short. But what's beautiful about this little tool here is I can uh, set this. Let me just turn my music off. I hit the, uh... there we go. So I can set this at a curve. And this is adjustable by adjusting this buckle with this nylon strap. This gives me a nice even curve. When I do it with the hardwood, the wood can bend differently along the length of it. So I have to do more math. I draw a bunch of lines and I'll make sure the measurement where I measure it from on along this curve is exactly the same so it's symmetrical. But this makes life easier. I just have a pencil line at center for that. So I make sure I get that in the right spot. I know my curve is going to be equal. That's what we're going to be using on the edge here. We're barely putting a curve on this though. First thing today is the butterfly mortises. I gotta clean these up first and then I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. Wouldn't be a Mike Z video without seeing the Astro van. <laughs> As I'm going through what was in there, I found these. I forgot about these. Unfortunately, I only have two of them. If I had three of these done, uh, I might try to talk the client into them. They're pretty cool. We got some pretty heavy winds here today, so... Never fun, never fun with that. It blows a lot of stuff into your face and whatnot. And my first step right now is just, I kind of have to smooth this top down a little bit so that uh, when it comes time to start working this material here, there's gonna be another thing I have to do too. But you can't have like a high spot and run your router because it'll, screw up your uh, your work but I might as well just do knock off all my high spots with this uh, and then once the uh, butterflies are in I'll have to do the same thing to them and then after that then we start sanding I did a little bit of this yesterday when it was up on the on the uh, clamping station there. Then I'll have to get a uh, straight edge on here and really eyeball everything and mark it with pencil lines and make a determination of where uh, I might have to sand certain areas out to give me this uh, a flatter surface again right now it's perfectly fine I mean it's it's pretty crazy And then also there's the whole bottom of the uh, of this thing that I'm not too concerned about trying to make the bottom of it perfect, but you, it's a funny thing with the furniture I make for people. When I do tables, <clears throat> by the way, there aren't pictures or video of every single thing I've ever built, but if you go to the Mike Z Design Facebook page, you can see a lot of it. And one of the things that blow people's minds is, is when I'm done with the piece, even the bottom looks as good as the top. On a 29 inch height table, it's not that important. But on one that's gonna be 40 inches or 42 inches tall, you know, if you're bending over to do something or whatever, there's a greater chance of you seeing the bottom, right? So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be pretty nice. 
I may, I might even put a Dutchman patch here just for the hell of it. I might I might do that for you guys uh, just so you can see what the Dutchman patch is. So well, let me get back to work. Yeah, and this here is why I can't. Uh, you know, I'm having a hard time cutting weight. Okay, so once again, this is uh, more so for my client. There's four plates. And these plates are... Give you a little overview of me standing next to it so you get more sense of scale. Yeah, so four people could sit here and eat no problem. This plate is nine and a quarter inches, but still, if you had a... A 12 inch plate you can still have four people sitting here no problems eating and that was the big thing for my client so Andrew all is good <laughs> and, and I do stuff like this because I see it in my mind I know what I'm doing but clients oftentimes they can't picture things in their minds they have to see it and it's not a knock against people, it's just some people are more visually uh, adept, right? So, I'm gonna keep working. I gotta show you something. La, 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 love you, I love you. All right, so, when you cut your uh, butterfly mortises, you're going to have like a rough edge here. And you just want to get yourself kind of a rough sandpaper and a flat edge and clean those uh, edges up so that they're a nice, smooth, straight line. So it's the thing, it's you know, more time. But you have to do this with all your butterfly mortises. Oh, I'm recording here. But, uh, okay. I got my mic on because of the wind. Now, it's been about five months since I honed any chisels, and I also brought a bunch of stuff to Arizona, which includes a chisel I probably should have kept here for doing what I'm about to do with the butterfly mortises. So I'm going to walk you through how I tune up my chisels real quick, and just talk about, like, chisel selection a little bit here. Because one of the things when you're doing your, uh, and I'm in bad shape with this, too. I really need to buy a new one of these, this this chisel here is chipped on the corner um, but what's good about it is it's long enough for me to strike it to give one strike when I'm doing the long parts and then you need a chisel that's about the right width here and you can see this one here is kind of short it's not the end of the world here for that because um, you can move it side to side it's fine it's nicer if it's a little bit wider than that so I should probably get some new ones. And then I call these here butterfly mortise chisels. You see the shape of that here? It allows you to get tighter in a corner. And I happen to have a couple here that are larger. And these are in pretty good shape, actually. I'm just going to quickly hone them a little bit on a stone. Uh, but one of these is in pretty bad shape, so I'm going to hit it on the sandpaper real fast. So I'm also not in a great mood again. Um, I'm going to save this for Sunday. I'm going to do a Sunday night chat. I got a whole bunch of little topics I've already been working on. And it's just, uh, you know, I don't want to get too into it right now, but I'm going to put myself in a little bit of a better mood. It's hard, though, man. It's one of those situations, you know, you ever have somebody ask you for something? They want help, they want a favor. And then you go ahead and you try to set them up or recommend them to somebody else to help them out. And then they let you down. Imagine somebody needs a job and you're in a position to help them out. Well, I know a guy who's hiring. And then you call that person who's hiring. And they're like, hey, if that guy can be down here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, he could start working tomorrow. And then you go back to the guy and you tell him, and he's like, yeah, I'll be there at 7.50 tomorrow morning. And then you wait a couple days, you don't hear anything. And then you get back to the guy who said he was going to be there at 7.50 in the morning, and he's like, oh, I overslept. Well, 
I mean, you let me down, makes me look bad. More importantly, you let yourself down. So that's, you know, now I can't help that guy out. And now as far as the favor he asked me, I told him it was conditional on him getting a job. Now I can't help him. So it's, uh, it's one of those situations. We'll talk about that more on Sunday. This chisel right here is maybe unrepairable. You don't need to sit, sit here and watch me do this. Um, I'll just quickly do a quick honing on a couple of these other ones here. My honing stone. I've had these stones, I've had most of these stones for at least 20 years, and they're still working. So. So you just want to hone your chisels real quick before you do something like this because, as you can imagine, you know, you want these to be as sharp as possible because it makes your life a lot easier. You know, right now, yeah, that's nice. You know, when you whack this into that walnut, you want it to cut nicely. You don't want to be over forcing things so it's a thing uh, when it comes to doing woodworking you know you need the tools more importantly the air quality here is, is chilly today if your fingertips are chilly from the cold water I can't navigate this and tell what's happening my warm hand is telling me that it's sharp enough. My cold hand isn't sending the message to my brain. It's funny how that works. So, you know, it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, you can buy all the tools and you can do, learn, figure out how to do the work, but you really need to know how to upkeep your tools at the same time. I have no idea how I chipped this. Obviously, I must have dropped it at some point, or I was transporting all my tools in a way where it hit another one and broke. And uh, that's just a bummer, because this is not a cheap tool, this chisel. And I could fix this. I just have to remove a lot of material, and I'd have to dedicate you know, part of a day to just fixing this one chisel. And maybe I should just do that. I'm not going to do it right now. I want to get these butterflies in. But at some point, you know. Back when I was doing um, more furniture, when I was doing furniture all the time, and that's all I was doing, it was easier for me. I could dedicate a, an entire day to tuning up tools. But since I've been, you know, because of this economy and the way things are going... I've had to start doing, you know, get kind of getting back to kind of like the contractor style of work and home improvement stuff and doing all the stuff that I was doing when I first learned this, which this will be a subject for Sunday, uh, what I was just talking about. Um, and uh, so, yeah, back, you would have to, you would have to dedicate a day every few weeks to tuning up your tools, your machines, whatever, because you need things to be running precisely. You need a certain amount of precision with your tools so that when it comes time to use them, then your workflow goes uh, more consistently and you don't lose as much time and you don't get as easily frustrated uh, because your tools aren't working right. So here you are just watching me do this. It's got to be boring as hell. So let me uh, turn you off here. I got another one to do here. And that's this is like surgical sharp here. That's what's happening. All right. I don't typically sit down when I'm doing this, but... It's pretty windy today. This is going to produce a lot of dust. And I want the dust to kind of blow past me here. Uh, if I was inside the shop, it would be more of a hassle. I do have my mic on. I hope that's working. 
and I'm about to lay these out here. I'm going to go a little bit off center. I decided to sink it a little bit tighter to the field. I'm calling this the field, and this is the frame, all right? It's the perimeter frame here. And uh, I'm doing that for a reason. The main one is I'm going to slightly, you know, cut in here a little bit and put a little bit of a curve on this. We've already discussed it. And so right now I'm just eyeballing things. The other thing I noticed is uh, when you do this, when you make your butterflies, as it turns out, I must have made these on different days because they're not all exactly the same thickness. They're pretty close, actually. That's weird. I was just looking at these and they felt like they were off, but okay. This one here is a little bit off. They're pretty close. This one here is the thickest. So I'm writing thick on there. Like my underpants. Uh, so. <laughs> As I was saying, uh, the reason I'm doing this, I'm just pointing this out to you, is, is you want to set the depth correct with your router. All right, and We're going to get to that in a minute. Also, I think there's enough room here for me. I should be able to see into this and see the lines that I'm going to draw without the need for doing the other base I discussed. It should work out fine. I'll let you know. You're going to see it. All right. So my first thing here is to determine where I want this and I'm this is totally subjective uh, I'm choosing it and this looks pretty good to me right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my square which is supposed to be in my pocket but it's not I'm going to measure this distance here and of course I need my spectacles I don't look goofy enough as it is. Now I look goofier. And this is telling me it's approximately an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do now is real fast. I'm going to go to all four corners. And I'm going to set this at an inch and a half. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a line. I know that that line is going to be this edge right here where that meets. So I'm going to do all four corners and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so those spots are marked. And now I'm going to get into a little bit of a discussion about aesthetics, like making things look correct. All right. A big part of why I'm good at what I do is I'm, I understand precision. I understand where I need to be precise. At the same time, you have to be careful about precision because if you work it to the nth degree, on all aspects of it, you run the risk of things not looking handmade. I know that sounds weird, but it's the truth. You can overdo it. One of the, my own critiques on my own work is I feel like sometimes I go overboard on making things perfectly flat and smooth because when you sit at it, it's like it, it screws people's minds up. When you look at old pieces of furniture that can go for a lot of money. I, I duplicated Charles Rolfe's pieces at one point, and I went and looked at his work. You know, look, I'm that guy. I will go and research things. I will go and look at furniture. I mean, I've looked at Art Nouveau pieces and all kinds of stuff, and in pictures, that stuff looks great, but when you really get up on it and you're right up to it, the, uh, the attention to detail is not really there. I don't know if that sounds right to you, but I'm just telling you, you will see gaps in the veneers and all kinds of issues that will, if you know what you're looking at, it's jumping out at you. And I tend to like make sure that my uh, tolerances are very, very, very tight. When it comes to butterfly mortises, if you're learning uh, what a lot of guys are going to do, they're going to get jigs. And I've, when I first tried to do butterfly mortises, that's what I did. It's like a plastic jig that has different size cutouts of this shape on it. And then it's a brass inlay kit that you use uh, with your router and you take a piece of material and you cut them out you run it on a table saw and then these pieces fall out and the problem with that is is that all the corners are rounded here or actually that's not the case they come out squared off here but when you take that piece of plastic and you transfer it to your piece to make the uh, female part when you run that around you end up with rounded corners so the first thing I learned right off the bat with that was 
instead of rounding the corners over on the piece that goes in, I would square off the corners in the female space. That helped make it look a little bit better. But the problem was everyone is exactly the same and super precise. That makes your work look cheap. It makes it look less handmade. This is just my opinion. It's just what I'm telling you. So I got to the point where I made these myself. And I have a formula. I know what I want this width to be right here. I know what I want the length to be. And uh, I know what I want the height to be here. And aesthetically, I think this is a very pleasing uh, bow tie or butterfly mortise. That's, I believe this is the best looking one, okay? That's my taste. Sometimes I make this narrower. Sometimes I make the whole thing larger. It always changes a little bit. But the beauty of cutting each one out by hand, now I, I do a lot of my cutouts on this on the band, so I lay these out. I have a new way to do it, by the way. I did watch a video a while ago, and there is a jig you can use on the bandsaw that will cut these out pretty easy. And you still have to do your hand finishing, which makes each one a little bit different. So I'm okay with that. And I'm gonna, in the future, I'll do that. But you'll see here, there's, you might be able to see this. You can still see a pencil outline on this piece. And you can see in the center, there's a straight line there, right here. So you can see that that was drawn out, and then I cut everything to the line. So... What that does is it makes each one of these a little bit different. Why am I explaining this to you? Well, <clears throat> when I go to put these in, I'm going to outline every, each one of these, and I'm going to put a mark on it so it orients correct, so that when I cut out the female area to fit this piece that this piece fits into, it's going to fit into that spot. But this one probably won't fit into that one. You understand? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around each one of these right now, I'm going to mark it correct, and I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to place each one where they go. So that when I come around and I do my router steps, I'm going to, or I'm going to number them. I'll put a number here and a number on this because I want to work in this corner the whole time. So after I make this first one and get it fit, I'm going to rotate the table. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> in, in the past, that's what I would do. I would do this, this step, then I would do this step, then I would do my chiseling, then I would fit them. I could, if I wanted to, do the whole step right now and get this one fitted here completely and then move on to the next one. And maybe that's what I'll do. I think maybe in real time right now, I'll try to do this for you. It's gonna make the video a little bit longer. But let's, let's go ahead and do that. Your number one uh, tool right now is a very sharp pencil. So I'm eyeballing this right now. What I like about having my pencil line here is, is I can align that with my 45 degree and I know that that's good. It's been quite some time since I've done a butterfly mortise so hopefully <laughs> I'm not too far out of practice where I make some uh, ridiculous mistake. All right my first time doing butterfly mortises since I needed glasses. Ooh, I forgot my hammer. Hang on one moment. This is a chisel hammer. You probably didn't hear that very well. This is a chisel hammer. <laughs> There's a uh, convex and a concave uh, side on this. Uh, I like the convex side on the back of the chisel. And the idea here is you want to lay this uh, chisel up on the inside of the line. Because as you strike it, it's going to move forward, right? The bevel is going to want to push the chisel towards the line. And you want to try to keep everything inside the line at this point. And the idea here with uh, putting this uh, chisel in here is that when you use the router, you're not going to get some kooky tear out that tears up the top surface. Of course, I have that chipped corner on this chisel. So I'm not cutting all the way to the end, but it doesn't matter. Your router bit can't get all the way into the corners anyhow. You have to clean that out by hand 
with your butterfly mortise chisels. This is a Japanese chisel. I prefer Japanese steel for hardwoods. I'm definitely moving slower than I uh, used to move on this because it's been a while. But, hey man, go slow. There's nothing wrong with that. Less chances to screw up. As I said, this chisel is a little bit short. So I got to do two strikes. What I'll do as soon as I get this outline, I'm going to pause the camera and show you this. I probably speak a little louder when I have these on because I can't hear my voice as well. And I did forget to mark this. I'm just going to put a mark here in case this bounces around on me and this shifts. I want to make sure I get the orientation correct. I'll set my depth on this. I set it so that I'm a little shy of the height. I don't mind if this is a little bit proud. Check this on all sides here because I can sand that down. So these are a little off and that's okay. I can see what's happening here. This is my lowest corner. So I need to set that correct. And again, I can take the uh, cabinet scraper and smooth this out afterwards, which, you know, you're obviously going to see. All right. This is my first time uh, using this uh, router for this purpose. I like this router. I've used it quite a bit already. <clears throat> Let's see if this works out for me. tell you right now this thing is awesome I've been using a Porter cable trim router that has to be over 30 years old and it's been working for me 
for years, but it had a lot more vibration. This is so smooth, I can't get over how nice that just cut. It was like butter. Uh, that's terrific. All right, let's trim that up. All right, this will take a little bit of time, but it should go relatively smoothly. I hope you guys get to see it all. I don't know how much my body is going to block this. see here you can still see some of the pencil line I'll be able to trim that up if I need to I probably will another trick is you can bevel this chisel in on a little bit of an angle all right as long as you don't come proud of the line and what that'll do is that'll make your life a little bit easier when you go to try to fit your uh, puzzle piece we'll call it I can tell you right now, this little one's going to have to get trimmed more. Because I can see a little bit of space from the line to this edge. So it's going to be a little tight there. You can also go nuts. You can chamfer this edge here a little and then try to get an extra snug fit. But that's a little overkill if you ask me most of the time. You know, the nature of your chisel is that a chisel like this, it's square right here. So you want to keep it away from the corner a little bit so it doesn't drift into the corner and wreck your tightness. The reveal, you'll understand this in a moment. Okay, now we want to get in here with a butterfly mortise chisel and try to tighten this up a little bit. You can see, because this has this profile here, I can get tighter into the corner. Now this might seem like I'm making it look easy. Don't be fooled. All right, this is years of practice. Uh, although, I think what I'm showing you is good enough. I think if you're a proficient person with tools and you're watching this you and you're saying to yourself, I could do that. Well, I believe you. <laughs> I know you can do it. Uh, this is nothing that special. I mean, people have been doing this. I hope I'm not blocking your view. Uh, my skull. People have been doing this sort of thing for uh, hundreds, if not thousands of years. Yes, I've heard the jokes before. I know I'm hired. Okay. <laughs> so now we just got to get this edge done. And when you do this, you want to try not to hit this edge, right? You don't want to pry and hit this edge here. Every once in a while I make that mistake. I do make mistakes. This might look funky here. That's because that's where the uh, groove was for the tongue to fit over the tongue. <laughs> So this is where things just get tedious. You got to get into these corners and do a little twist away. <laughs> this looks pretty good. As I said, I'm pretty certain I'm going to need to trim some of these lines, but let's see what the fit looks like at the moment. That looks really, really good. I'm very, very, very close to just being able to hammer this home. Take your sharp, ch your sharp pencil out again. That looks pretty good there. All 
all right? This is so sharp, I can literally take a hair off of it. Try to get that out of there so I can show you how thin that is. So you're not going to get this with uh, those uh, buck chisels that you buy at Home Depot. All right. Uh, however, you can hone those chisels. To the point where they will perform this well. I've done it. Again. You can see through that. <laughs> and you just kill it. You kind of fiddle with this a little bit until you get it to the point where it's snug, but you get the vibe where you're like, okay, okay. At this point now, I can drive that home. The bummer here is this corner is busted. That is. That's making my life far more miserable than it needs to be. Your chisel should be sharp enough where you can do what I'm doing right now. But believe me when I tell you, uh, the wood is so hard that this does take a little bit out of you physically. Um, gripping the chisel... Uh, flexing your your body uh, in a way where you're putting body weight on this to get that to shave just a little bit off. I know that this side here felt a little tight to me inside the corner, so we'll just trim that up a hair. So you guys understand um, why something like this costs money. Time is money, and it takes time to get this right. I feel like this is about right. It has been a while. I feel like I could probably force this in at this point and hammer that in and make it work. So let's get some glue and see if we can make that happen. All right. Type on two glue again. You don't need to put too much in here. I'll put a little more here because I know it's going to fill that area where there's a little void. And what you're looking for here is some squeeze out. And you put it in. That's probably too much glue. That's how long it's been since I've done this. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it's so dry. My fingers are so dry. Everything's just slipping out of them. All right. So here's the uh, fun part. I could probably hammer this home a little bit more, but I don't feel like beating on it that much. I'm wetting the entire area to kind of give you guys a vibe of what it's going to somewhat look like once the finish is on it.
So that's it, man. That's uh, your butterfly more. So you guys can do the math. How long did that take? Multiply that by four just to get the butterfly mortises in. Whoops. That's my hand blocking the view. I have the camera upside down. You have to turn the camera upside down <laughs> to work the mic. Otherwise, the mic, you see it in the top there. So that's it. I'll get back to you in a few. Okay, so all four of them are in. All four corners. And on that little knot right there, I actually filled that with some Purple Heart, which will pop more once everything's sanded smooth and some finish is on it. And that's it. I'm going to... It's funny how that takes a lot out of you. You know, you, you finish a step, and uh, but there's still a little time left in the day. But you, like that's kind of mentally slightly stressful. So anyhow, I'm going to flip this over and work on smoothing the bottom of this tabletop out a little bit. And then there's a ton of work to do on this, uh, getting it ready to put finish on it. There's a lot of scraping and sanding and making sure you get all the milling marks and scraper marks and sander marks out if you use a machine so it's it's tedious also i'm still thinking about what i want to do here i'm thinking about making a kind of like a jig for the table saw and tilting the table saw blade and doing the chamfer on this edge a little bit i'm going to be thinking about that if i do that i have to do that before i do this curve and i don't want to rush that thought I don't feel like I need to do that today. So I'm going to work on the back side and make the back side flat, uh, which it doesn't really affect if I do the, the jig. The most the, the important part is this part here. So like I've got to make these smooth and you, you wait a day on that because sometimes what happens, it's funny, this glue will dry overnight and then sometimes these uh, butterflies sink in a little. So once I make these flush and this is pretty flat across the top, then if I make the jig and tilt this up and run it on edge to do the bevel, that'll work for me. So I, I want to think that out. In the meantime, I'm going to work on the bottom, like I said, and then uh, knock off for the day. I got some phone calls I have to make. But yeah, that's where we're at. It's looking pretty cool. You can kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. There's a, there's a light, a warm light on the center, which is throwing the color off. But you can see that this is lighter in the center, which I did this on purpose. Keeping in mind, this is all going to be the same color in short order. Once you get the finish on it, it all kind of blends to be the same color. So uh, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of a long one. Uh, but now you know how, to, how I do my butterfly mores. This is Again, this is not me telling you this is how you should do it. I'm showing you how I do it. And this is a technique I came up with on my own. I didn't watch anybody else do it. I just figured this out a long time ago, <laughs> over 20 years ago, probably 25 years ago or so, maybe longer. It was the first time I ever did a butterfly mortise. So it works for me. Have a good day. Be good to one another. And, uh, you know, come back again. Tell your friends.